Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and Intel have finally, finally revealed their new 10th generation desktop processors, including what they're calling the world's fastest gaming processor, the i9-10900K, uh, which is a 10-core chip, 20 threads, and turbo boosts up to a massive 5.3 gigahertz. Not bad, although things aren't quite that simple. As for the rest of the range, well, there's a ton of them, including all the usual suspects like the 8-core 16-thread i7-10700K and the 6-core 12-thread i5-10600K, which are probably the pick of the mid-high-end chips for gaming. But the big question, what exactly is new here? Well, we're getting slightly faster clock speeds, enhancements to overclocking, which should make it a little bit easier. Uh, they also support faster RAM on the i7 and the i9. And crucially, this is really important actually, Every single processor, even the cheapest base i3, supports hyperthreading. So a whole new lineup, some pretty decent upgrades, uh, but of course the next question is pricing. And it looks like they're pretty much going to match like for like the current pricing of uh, the 9 series processors that we get at the moment, which is fine, at least it's not going up, but it would have been nice to see uh, maybe some more competitive pricing uh, to really take the fight to AMD. Unfortunately though, we are looking at a whole new socket, LGA 1200, uh, coming with a new series of Z490 motherboards. So if you do want the new processor, you're also gonna have to buy a new motherboard as well. So it's gonna get pricey. And funnily enough, as I was actually filming this video, I had to pause because there was a knock on the door uh, and I had a delivery of this guy. It's the uh, Sabrent 2 terabyte uh, PCIe 4 NVMe SSD and I'm actually uh, going to be using this in my Threadripper 3 uh, build which I'm working on at the moment and will be replacing my main video editing rig. That's a whole different topic, a whole different video, but crucially PCIe 4 which AMD Ryzen and Threadripper, the latest motherboards, do support. But unfortunately, these new 10th gen processors from Intel don't officially support PCIe 4, which isn't a big deal right now. But, you know, if you're going to be paying a bunch of money for a new processor and a motherboard, it would have been nice if they're a bit more future proof. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until the 11th series of Intel chips, Rocket League. Rocket League? No, Rocket Lake. <laughs> Rocket League would have been a good name, uh, but for official. PCIe 4 support. Some motherboards may actually add it in themselves, but it will be very costly, probably not the most efficient. So yeah, that's a little bit disappointing, I'd say. But the good news is we do get Wi-Fi 6 support. Anyway, let's get back to the king of the hill, the i9-10900K. And for the same price as the current 9900K, you get two extra cores and threads. And of course, the claimed boost clocks up to 5.3 gigahertz out of the box. The problem though is that that 5.3 gigahertz boost only applies to one core. Everything else uh, maxes out at 4.9 gigahertz. But crucially, Intel doesn't say how long you can sustain these boost clock speeds as well because really it all comes down to your system and what your cooling solution is. However, the good news is that it's not just a case of same old, same old. Intel is doing things a little bit differently this time. If you've ever researched buying a new processor before, then you've probably come across the term silicon lottery, where supposedly identical chips actually perform differently, sometimes by a decent margin. Now, 10th gen CPUs automatically test each core and then prioritize the two best performers to boost first and highest which is where we get that 5.3 gigahertz figure on the 10900K and without raising the voltage. But to be clear, I don't have the physical chip yet, uh, but I have been in an Intel briefing, so I know all about the new chips, which is why I'm giving you this news video. Uh, but I will, of course, test them all properly uh, and see what kind of speeds we're getting in the real life, in the, in the real life, in the real world, um, when I get it soon. So while Intel has struggled to match AMD on core count in the past, again, they're fighting back with core frequency. And Intel claimed that 60% of games are still optimized for single cores, where higher clock speeds will make a bigger difference, especially when it comes to reducing latency. And to help them do this, they've reduced the actual die thickness while increasing the thermal interface solder, which is much better at dissipating heat. Intel's also concentrated on improving the overclocking experience. So this time around, instead of turning hyperthreading either on or off, we can now enable or disable it for individual cores. So for example, turning a few virtual cores off may help in reducing heat and allows you to optimize your system for the programs that you use and how you make use of those threads. You also now get the option of controlling voltages using a frequency curve, which should allow for extra fine tuning. So Intel are claiming double digit performance gains, uh, even versus the current 9900K and even up to 18% better performance in Adobe Premiere Pro, which makes sense given the boost in frequency and the two extra cores. I will of course test that all myself, but that does sound like a decent upgrade. Intel's figures for improvements compared to a three-year-old i7-7700K are much higher, of course, anywhere from 35 to 81%, although a pinch of salt is always advised with a company's own numbers. Okay, sounds pretty good overall then, but why am I still a little bit worried? Well, like the rest of the range, it's still based on Intel's virtually prehistoric 14 nanometer process. 
Admittedly a very refined process, but it struggles to compete versus AMD's current Ryzen 3000 series, uh, which are built on the far more efficient and cooler 7 nanometer process. Now normally chip makers improve performance by making the processor itself more efficient, but Intel can only get so far with that 14 nanometers. So instead they've increased power consumption, or TDP, from 95 watts to 125 watts on the i5, i7 and i9. And as usual this figure only applies to base clocks, and from some early reports I've seen on performance it looks like the top end chip could break 300 watts under heavy load. That's a lot, although no great surprise I guess as we saw the 125 watt 9900KS hitting 250 watts in some cases. If this is the case, then you're going to want some pretty beefy and probably quite expensive cooling to take full advantage of it in your PC, which could limit their value proposition versus AMD. Now speaking of AMD, matching chips like for like to the Ryzen 3000 lineup is a bit tricky. Intel retains their clock speed advantage, so for purely gaming, they're likely to still be the best choice. They may not be the best value though. The 10900K is due to retail for $10 less than the 3900X, but that chip offers two extra cores and should be better for highly threaded workloads. I think the i7 10700K though could be a good gaming option as it's priced between the Ryzen 3700X and the 3800X and will run a few hundred megahertz quicker. So altogether I'd say I'm cautiously excited, I mean they are pushing the benchmarks, we are going to see a better performance with the higher clock speeds, with the extra cores and threads and it is great to see hyper threading across the lineup but it is all at the cost of a higher TDP so unless you have pretty beefy cooling I'm not sure if we're going to get the best out of it. And crucially, even if Intel can claim the world's fastest gaming processor, that doesn't necessarily mean you should buy it. Is it the best value? Well, again, all these things I'll be covering in my full review and some comparison videos coming soon. And don't forget, AMD's got their 4000 series desktop processors coming out in September. Uh, so Intel's really got a fight on their hands this year. But of course, all this competition is great for me and you, for the consumer. Uh, either we'll get better value or we'll see more innovation. But what do you reckon? Have you been holding off your PC upgrade for 10th gen? Uh, are you excited for it or are you already sold on Ryzen? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I can't wait to test them. So make sure you do hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on my videos. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.